I'm 10 years older, I would believe you, okay? <laughs> Plus, Wesley Snipes totally needs to be a Terminator. Yeah. Ron Perlman could have been another Terminator, and Guillermo del Toro directing it. It would have been so awesome. So I would have liked to see this creative team make Terminator 3 and just recast John Connor with Norman Reedus because he at least looks like Edward Furlong. And that's what made me think of it, just because he, he just re- resembled him so uh, so closely. I like the Terminator 3 we got. Thanks, Brandon. Moving on. <laughs> I see what you're saying, though. Like, yeah, there, I, I, I think it would be interesting to have him do that, but I don't know. I, it's a tough comparison to make, right? So I'm not. I guess I don't, I'm not familiar enough with this movie to be able to make that comparison to seeing it that way. Like, come on, Ron Perlman's a Terminator. Like, he doesn't. He, he wears sunglasses as most of them do, right? But he wears the sunglasses the whole time, mm-hmm. right? It's like a vampire thing, right? Even mm-hmm. tonight, we're gonna wear sunglasses. That's right. So it's just so very Terminator seeing all these guys around with their sunglasses beating each other up. So all these elements together is what maybe made me think of that. But uh, talk about this team of vampires that Blade has to like, train and work with and. Sadly, I think they're mostly disposable. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you could get rid of about half of them; it wouldn't matter. Like, I would keep Ron Perlman and Donnie Yen, and maybe one other one, right? Yeah. But there's three mm-hmm. other ones, and they all get disposed of. And and the, like the, the big guy with his girlfriend, yeah. just like uh. like those two, like that. That's that's a classic like zombie movie trope, right? Where somebody gets bit but doesn't tell anybody, and he's gonna turn and kill yeah. everybody. I thought they were gonna do more with that, like because the big guy he gets bit, and the girlfriend's like, "Oh, what's wrong?" He's like, "Oh, I'm good, I'm good." He just covers up his uh, bite. Then right. he turns at some point and then like, kills like three people and, and then kills himself immediately. I was like, well, that's... <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a, a really lame payoff to a interesting setup. Like, oh, mm. good, finally they're going to do something. The only reason they did that was to wipe out all the extra members of the team that didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're crawling around the tunnels. Because uh, they, they just had to keep, you know, whitt- whittling it down. Uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, Nissa and Blade, although they didn't you know, consummate their relationship, even though it was in the script, right? Mm-hmm. I-, I liked their vibe better than uh, the romance in the first movie. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. They're, they're, these two are on definite more equal footing. Also, like she can handle herself. Um, she, you know, she comes from a like a you know a dominant type of family. Uh, she knows what's going on. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's totally different dynamic here. Was the end a little too melodramatic though with them in the sunlight? <laughs> Like where she's in his arms. Well, I think I think it was like that because there was no love scene between them. That had to be it. Okay, I can, it was very. I touching. can see that. <laughs> very touching. I did wonder though. You know, remember when uh, I keep calling him Nosferatu, but when he was gonna like go and get in his helicopter and they're gonna leave, but then yeah. this it shuts everything down. Uh, and then of course later on they go out there and there's that moment we just mm-hmm. talked about. Like, did those guys just leave at some point? Like, well, I guess he's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> just took off this, this one uh, i'll say like i liked the first one better mm-hmm. than this one and i think it's just because i i liked the the 90s feel the gritty feel mm-hmm. uh the more uh, i don't know tangible feel the first one this one was was more polished but sometimes having a bigger budget is double-edged sword i think sometimes yeah yeah it can be so too many characters maybe you know to, but but uh for the concept of a sequel i think the story was the right way to go uh because what do you do with like he's just gonna keep hunting vampires well no let's have him fight with the vampires for another threat. But of course, once you play that card, right? Where, where do you go from there? We'll get into that next oh, time. Oh, man. <laughs> well, what, based on what you said there, so like I personally think I preferred this one a little bit more than the first one, mostly because of some of the neat action sequences. Um, you know, I went with it. It was fun. Um, I really liked seeing Ron Perlman. And uh, as much as I was confused that they brought him back, you know, Chris Christopherson's character is a, is a good character. Right. I liked him. And, uh, I look forward to seeing him in the next movie. Also, like, I mean, we didn't like Scud, but I did like Whistler and Scud's interaction the entire movie. Mm hmm. So like, yeah, especially like each other. Yeah. Which was great. <laughs> and then like, especially like when, when uh, Scud calls him honky tonk. Honky tonk. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Just like a, it's a nice little throwaway line there, but it's, it's, it's hilarious. It fits exactly what those characters are like, like yeah. to a T. Well, yeah. And Whistler got to be in the climax on like last time because, yeah. you know, he was dead. <laughs> uh, the tradition continues, though, of of Blade, you know, getting his uh, shirt ripped off, yep. and strapped down to something, showing that, off Wesley Snipes' physique. I'm, I'm sure that's probably in Snipes' contract. He's just like, I must show off my physique in my six pack abs, um, so, so everybody can see how ripped I am. Blade, right? He gets away with a lot of stuff because the villains like need him. Uh-huh. Like, all right, we can't kill him. We need his blood. We need him for this. We need him for that, right? Because I mean, it's the same kind of thing that happened both times. Yes. Or they would have, you know, just well, he's, up killed he, him. He, you know, he's 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 proven himself in you know indispensable because he is a, a special oddity in their universe. Mm-hmm. There has been no one else in the history 
of the world who has been bit when they're pregnant. Apparently. Hmm. Vampires don't like pregnant chicks, huh? I guess not. But you know what? Like every other it's an acquired e- taste. <laughs> every other story has like these chosen one type of things. So like I guess Blade is is that for this mm. type of universe. Right. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. With him being the only one. I mean, yeah, because uh, it's it is what is unique about the universe. It's what makes him different. He's the Daywalker. Exactly. The Daywalker. And that's such a cool nickname too. What, what, ser- seriously, I wish when they when they remade Blade, they just call it Daywalker. <laughs> they won't because they got to say, "Remember Blade? Blade? It will be Blade." Daywalker. Day Walker. Oh, yes! Daywalker, a Blade story. Yeah, Daywalker, a Blade story. Coming to <laughs> Disney Plus 2022. That's good. Oh, man. All right, guys, I'll have a question for you. How many vampire bites occurred in Blade 2? Mm, I don't I don't think there was that many. I think there was like three. Okay, Brandon says three. Brandon is wrong, by the way. I think... <sighs> I'm going to guess 11. 11. Okay, Lance is much closer. But it, oh, but if this price is right, Brandon would win. Did I even watch this movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, I counted a total of nine. Hmm. All right. The blood bank workers at the beginning, that's two. Okay. The drug dealer, uh, that's three. Okay. Uh, the priest, that's four. Light hammer, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's five. Oh, that's the dude with the girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Assad, that's six. <laughs> that guy uh the, what, the, he was the most worthless one of the he group. was he really yeah, was. I, I, I forgot about him this entire conversation <laughs> it's like how many of these guys were there it's the, that's the same it's like the same problem the lost world has with jurassic park and i know you love the lost world Redden, don't you i love most of the lost world i don't like the godzilla okay, ending to it but of course you do but like <sighs> why do i do this jurassic show pa- <laughs> jurassic park <laughs> jurassic park has like seven characters yeah. lost world has like 35 characters and like who's died who cares whatever you know getting back to the count here uh when Novak breaks into the compound at the end, he kills all the security guards. Yeah. We see him actually biting one. Mm-hmm. And there's all these dead guys around him. I don't think I kept that as one. Okay. Because, you know, maybe he just killed everybody and sucked the blood of this one guy. So that's seven. Uh, when they killed Nosferatu, that's eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Nissa's nine, because she gets bit as well. Yeah. Uh, so those are the nine I came okay. up with. Now, I do have an addendum. Last time we said there were only five. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are actually six, because uh, Karen's ex-boyfriend also got bit. We forget, oh, we forgot yeah. about him because they both get bit. You want to talk? Is can we talk about us? Yeah. <laughs> what an amazing scene! So uh, six for the first movie, <clears throat> nine for the second. That brings us to a grand total so far of total franchise vampire bites at fifteen. Who's Karen? So let's rate the movie <laughs> <laughs> out of. Five fangs. Lance, how many fangs would you give Blade 2? Uh, I'm going to give it four fangs because okay. I really liked it. I like these first two movies equally, but just for different reasons. Fair enough. As for me, I'm going to go with three and a half fangs. I, I liked it, but just just a half step under the last one. Uh, a lot of things that improved on like the love story aspect, the mm-hmm. lack of a love story, and more of like a mutual respect platonic thing you had going on with Nissa. The vampire team is a cool concept. There was just so so much personality in the first one, which I enjoyed so much. That was a little lacking here. So that's probably why I still favor the first one, but I really enjoyed both of these. So what about you, Brandon? I'm going to give it the same rating I gave the last one. I give it a three. And um, yeah, I, I, like if I'm ranking them, I definitely think this one's a little bit better than the other one, but not statistically significant enough to warrant anything like a half star or extra star or anything like that. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, the general consensus seems to be this is the better of mm. the two. <laughs> of the two Blade films. <laughs> 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 but uh, final question then, is this franchise fatigued yet? Lance, what do you say? Not nope. knowing what's coming. <laughs> nope, it's not. Okay. Mm. I say no as well. I think they've, ex- the, like this movie, they expanded the vampire mythology like you were talking about earlier. Plenty of ways to keep doing that. You know, maybe, I don't know, here's a crazy idea. What if he meets Dracula or something? That'd be a real cool idea, <laughs> right? The original vampire? That, I think that'd make an awesome, like, cap to the trilogy for Blade to fight. I don't know. The They'll never do that. That's weird. Epic. Va- I, that's ridiculous. That's I know. Ridiculous. They wouldn't do it. But that's just a suggestion. <laughs> Only but, if Brent, they get Bella you? Lugosi. <laughs> what if we just have somebody hold a cape in front of his face the whole time? I love it. <laughs> Say it's him. Yeah, I'm in. I love you, Brandon. Do you think his franchise is fatigued yet? You know what? For me, to get two three-star movies in a row, I'm going to say, yeah, I think this is fatigued. So, well, What does it take for you to say no? Does it have to be four stars in a row? 
Is three not good enough for you? Three is not good enough for me, I don't think. I like it. <laughs> You're such a snob. <laughs> I know it's not Children a... of the Corn Part 4, but come on. I thought it was pretty good. Oh, man. When we get to Children of the Four, Children of the Corn movies, I got like a love-hate relationship with those. As, as terrible as those movies are, you know, like, yeah, I, I'm like, let's have another Children of the Corn movie. All right. So, I love hate. Godzilla, on the other hand, I'm like struggling to get through the back half of my Criterion set because uh, that uh, that those aren't very good movies. Well, once you hit the seventies, it's tough. How far are you in the Godzilla movies? I've watched. Well, so I watched. Uh, it, believe it or not, okay. So I watched them with my kids in English, but I watched them in reverse order for the English ones that were in the Criterion set, and then in Japanese, I was watching them in chronological order in Japanese. And so I've seen all the English versions, and I've seen all the Japanese versions on the first half of the set. I don't know. I got six left, I think it is, out of the 15. So The, the 70s are tough, but I really like the Mecha Godzilla movies at the end. I like don't. The last two. <laughs> so, Blade, <laughs> Lance says it's not fatigued. I say it's not fatigued. Brandon says it is. We'll find out what we think next time in Blade Trinity. <laughs> all three of us will be back to talk about the third movie. We are the Blade Trinity. We are the Trinity. <laughs> we have to talk about it. Um, so, Lance, thanks so much for joining us again to talk about Blade. If people thanks want to find you me. out there online, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at Sir Lance Laster on all of my social medias. Zach, when you're not showing us your lip tattoo, where can people find you? <laughs> well, you can find me personally on Twitter at MoronZach. That's M-O-O-R-E-O-N-Z-S-E-H. I'm also the host of my own podcast, Always Flown to Smallville. We talk about each and every episode of that Young Superman show over there. You can find us on Twitter at Always Smallville with one S. And Brandon, when you aren't getting blinded by UV light, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Brandon Metella. You can find me over on The Line, which is on Trek FM. It's a podcast all about Star Trek Picard. And you can find me on the Fandom Podcast Network with my friends Chris and Tom. We have a show called Good Evening, an Alfred Hitchcock podcast, where we cover all of Hitch's films in chronological order. And uh, this last episode that we had is on the underrated masterpiece Lifeboat. So if you haven't seen Lifeboat, you should check it out because the entire movie takes place on one life raft. And it's a, a very large life raft, but it's a pretty cool movie. I definitely recommend it. Um, yes, thank you so much to Ken Tripp and Tony Robinson for being executive producers of the network. Thank you so much to Zach Tripp for creating our wonderful theme music. And uh, thank you to our wonderful patrons of uh, of the UFP network. If you want to find some cool Patreon content, uh, for $5 a month, you can go and listen to some exclusive audio commentaries where Zach and I do commentaries for Star Trek episodes. And uh, we just released an episode on Threshold, as well as the animated series episode, The Survivor. And uh, please give us a rating and review. That helps us and helps others find the show. Uh, that's the best way to get us out there, to spread the word, is to, you know, to retweet us, to infect the viewers. Don't bite them. Don't bite your fellow listeners. Retweet, because that helps. Not even a chuckle or a smile. I thought it was funny. Nothing. <laughs> that's great, Brad. Well... I guess that's all we got for you this week. Until next time when we cover Blade Trinity, which I'm sure it's great. Ryan Reynolds is in it. I mean, hey. And Jessica Biel. And, and Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> well, until then, don't bite me on the neck. You suck. That was a vampire pun. <laughs> This has been a production of MTMR Media Works. But uh, but yeah, I uh, I think that uh, uh, this one was a uh, I don't know. I had nothing to say. Someone else say something. This one was what? I don't I don't know. I had nothing. I was gonna see what came out, but nothing came out. Okay. <laughs>